Robots versus humans. They were in panic. For the Russians, this came as a complete surprise. The first ever assault conducted exclusively by ground and aerial drones. Such headlines recently appeared in major global and specialized media. What happened? And how did the attack, which combined different types of drones, unfold? United 24 Media learned directly from those who planned and executed this operation. Modern warfare has become extremely technological, and it is the Ukrainian army that is now testing all the most advanced developments in action. Ukraine's arsenal already includes various robotic systems that minimize human involvement on the battlefield. However, fighters of the 13th National Guard Brigade Hartia went further. This unit is responsible for defending a section of the front over 10 miles wide, located very close to the border with Russia. And it is here, at the end of 2024, that Hartia conducted the first example of a combined arms maneuver solely with the help of robots. Call sign Shuhai, 32 years old, S3 officer at the Hartia Brigade headquarters. According to our communications intercepts, they were in a panic. And the enemy soldiers on the ground were especially taken by surprise. UAV is like common sense in our time. Along with ground platforms that enter enemy positions and explode, or platforms that move in and shoot at them. This approach is not common, so we catch the enemy off guard. Shohai was directly involved in planning the operation for the first ever drone-only attack. It had a whole range of tasks to create conditions for further advancement, force the enemy to regroup their troops, destroy specific shelters and obstacles, and test the interaction between headquarters and individual crews. During the preparation stage, routes and actions of all robotic complexes were carefully calculated using physical mock-ups and virtual models. Then the robots imitated the operation several times on the training ground. The exact number of drones used in the attack is not disclosed by Hartia. However, it is known that several dozen complexes of various types participated, from small UAVs to those weighing about 1,000 pounds. These included Ground and aerial kamikaze drones, ground drone with a machine gun turret, heavy bombers, aerial drones for reconnaissance and surveillance. Call sign Pan, 26-year-old chief sergeant of the UGV platoon. Before the war, he was a molecular biologist. Pan was involved in planning and directly commanded drones during the attack. All robots that we use uh, are manufactured in Ukraine. It was a modern combined robotic arms warfare and each component played its role in making um, day of occupiers much worse and it make me happy the key word here is combined various drones have been used in modern warfare before ukraine was even the first country to create a separate drone division of troops robots in ukraine are operated in very different fields in fall 2024 the ukrainian robot furia backed by mortars and FPVs, cleared Russian positions in the Kursk region. In February 2024, a logistics ground drone retrieved a rare Russian Arlan-30 UAV from the Grey Zone. A year ago, the ground kamikaze drone Karakurt traveled 4 kilometers to blow up a bridge used by the enemy with a 55 kilograms charge. Modern ground robots can mine and demine serve as mobile EW stations, fire machine guns, flamethrowers and grenade launchers, act as kamikazes, deliver supplies and evacuate the wounded. During the historic operation, drones performed well. This created an effect that we couldn't achieve with aerial drones. Additionally, our platform equipped with machine gun also reached its target and successfully completed its mission. So did everything go perfectly? What about losses? And what lessons did this operation teach? Hartia acknowledges that there were losses of equipment. In an official video, it is visible that the enemy tried to hit ground drones with mortars, bomber drops and their own FPV drones. But... They are not succeeded in it, but nature was more successful. One of our kamikaze drones stuck on the dirt on its way to the aim and our turret on the way home also stuck in dirt but no one was destroyed by Russians. According to Hartia fighters, terrain passability and connection are currently key weaknesses of ground complexes. 
to understand the terrain, Hartia takes high-resolution photos of the battlefield and creates orthophoto plans with information about the current state of the area. Even though two ground complexes lost their battle with off-road conditions, the main aspect of using robots comes into play. The most important advantage of ground vehicles is that it is a bunch of wires, microcontrollers, uh, and giants and batteries. When it is destroyed, we just deploy another one of the same time. If a human falls, it is an um, irreparable. During assaults, the Russians use numerous small groups for infiltration and reconnaissance in force. For them it's normal, but we cannot afford such an approach. However, we cannot afford such tactics because we don't have as many people. More importantly, we refuse to accept such heavy losses. Unmanned ground platforms undoubtedly have a significant future for various types of offensive operations. As for the lessons learned, Shuhai says, the main lesson is that we are capable of planning and executing complex operations using ground platforms and UAVs. However, we need organizational improvements, particularly in coordination of ground platforms. However, the operation's outcome is deemed successful, as summarized by Hartia. The hypotheses were tested, the equipment performed as expected, the shelter was destroyed, the enemy's reaction was provoked, subsequent assault actions were successful, and the brigade secured a new foothold. And what about ground drones for the Russians? Is there room for improvement? Well, you'll see for yourself. Many stories about Russian robotic systems resemble sitcoms. For example, here is a demining drone, Chilnok, trying to attack a spectator. The main Russian military channel Zvezda initially aired, but then removed a segment about the combat robot platform map. Perhaps because it almost crushed the host and then flipped over. Now, Hartia states that communication between operators and drones remains one of the key challenges. Ukrainians and Russians aren't the only ones grappling with the challenges of ground combat drones. Some of the most interesting global manufacturers include Estonia's Milram Robotics, whose tracked Themis drones have been delivered to Ukraine, the American-Israeli company Roboteam, and the British Unmanned System Technologies. However, no one has a universal solution yet. Hartia compares the current stage of ground combat drones to the era of muskets in the history of firearms. We need to understand that it's only the first steps that we do and that does that do Russians in this field, in the field of ground vehicles. And these first steps are very important. And amount and quantity of people, of resources involved in these first steps are crucial in this strategic field. But we enjoy our result. In 2020, there was a report about a very unique action by the Turkish-made kamikaze drone Kargu-2 during the conflict between Libyan government forces and separatists. At that time, an aerial drone autonomously tracked and destroyed an enemy soldier. For now, the mass use of fully autonomous operator-less robots in warfare is not a reality. But it is entirely possible that this is only for now. The field of combat drones continues its journey beyond the musket era. The Russians should definitely prepare for more operations like this. However, they will still be a surprise for them.